Hello everyone. Hope everybody's doing fine. It's been a long time since I've done a video. And today I really wanted to do something. Um, I've been feeling like doing it. Uh, um, having, especially this topic. I think it's a very important uh, topic that I'm going to speak about today. Um, but it's been a while. I miss all my friends or my family. It's been a long time. You know, I ended up cutting my hair. Everyone's telling me, oh my goodness, you cut your hair. And yeah, it's, uh, I haven't had my hair this short ever, ever. This is the first time. But um, with COVID, I don't know if some of you experienced the same thing, but um, I had a lot of hair loss. So I literally was having clumps and clumps of hair falling out. I ended up having bald spots on the sides here. And so it came to the point that even though my hair was a bit long, it, it looked stringy, so it didn't look really that nice anymore. So I just told my hairdresser, you know what, just go ahead and chop it off. Let's start fresh, you know. So it's the first time I've had, this is my, you know, it's different. I feel a little strange because I don't have my normal length hair, but um, but we're blessed. And that's, what's, what, what, that's what matters. So I hope everyone is doing well. Um, now we know that the COVID, the percentage is going up again. That Delta Plus, you know, it's, we gotta be, we got to pray. There's so many people, I was speaking to some of my friends, they say the hospitals are full, they're starting to fill up again. Um, even, you know, I. I don't know, but I, I got the vaccine, but even with the vaccine, I still take care of myself. And even though they were saying, if you don't have the vaccine, you don't have to worry about wearing a mask. Um, I have to say maybe one or twice I decide, I said to myself, I'm not gonna wear the mask today. But then after that, I said, no, forget it. I'm not gonna do that. I'm still gonna be super cautious. I'm gonna be super careful. There are a lot of people that were vaccinated that are in the hospitals with COVID as we speak. So, you know, and not only here in the United States and other countries, it's going around again. The percentages are rising up again. So I urge and I encourage everyone to take care of yourselves, to take extra precautions. I know that, you know, um, we're probably tired of wearing a mask, but you have to understand it's either you're um, wearing the mask and protecting yourself and your family or not wearing it and putting your life in danger, not only your life, but also the loves of your loved ones. So, you know, wear that mask, wash your hands constantly. Let's not le let, let our guard down because I don't think that it's not over. So, you know, let's continue being very, very careful. Um, and we just got to pray that it doesn't get any worse. I think that what we went through over a year ago with COVID when it started, it was horrific. And um, with all so many deaths that we saw and that we heard of, we don't want to go through that again. My heart goes out to everyone who has lost a loved one, a friend, someone that they know to this horrific virus. My prayers and thoughts go out to you. Um, it's been very hard, you know, for, I know people who've had relatives in the hospital with COVID. Um, when everything started, they were not able to go and see them at the hospital um, or spend their last, hours with them so it, it's been very very hard and i think that because of this situation because of so many people losing their lives now and so many people losing their loved ones i decided to speak about something that is very delicate but i think is needed and because i experienced i was able to experience the loss of a loved one not to COVID but nevertheless, the loss of a loved one. And I experienced the grie the grieving um, process and what you go through and all of these different emotions going through that. I've decided to talk about today, the seven stages um, of grief and 
how um, they affect us. So I think it's very important. You know, one of the things that we know is that um, death is a part of life. It's something that none of us can escape. And we all experience that, you know, we know, we know that sooner or later, we're all going that same direction, unfortunately, but this is how it is. This is the reality. However, no, even knowing this, it doesn't make it any easier when we lose a loved one. And I really believe we can never be prepared enough um, when we lose a loved one, whether you know, it's the, they die unexpectedly, or even if they, they've been on, in the hospital bed for months, and we may, you know, we know, we talk to the doctors, we talk to the nurses, and we know what's going to happen, but it never really prepares us until the moment comes, and then it hits us, and, and, and as a matter of fact, when it does happen, Sometimes it doesn't hit you right away. I that's the way I am. So I want to discuss a little bit about that because I think everyone that experiences a loss, you know, they grieve differently. So you know, um we just have to remember, okay? None of us wish that our loved ones would leave us sometime that we wish they would be with us forever. But like I said before, the truth is death is part of life. So today I wanna to talk about the seven stages of grieving and how they affect us during this process. And we must keep in mind that everyone grieves differently in their own unique way. I truly believe that there are no two people that grieve the same. Everyone grieves differently. So, you know, there we all have emotions, uh, inner pain, questions, um, anger, doubts. Well, and the list goes on. And, um, and many times I think that the, what we are experiencing at that moment, those emotions, those feelings that we're experiencing, sometimes they're even hard for us personally to know how to express or put them into words it, it it's just a very very um very difficult moment okay so that's why i wanted to talk about this i wanted to talk about you know the loss of a loved one and the reason why i wanted to talk about it is because i experienced the loss of a loved one um, in 2015, I lost my sister. Now today I am able, we're back in 2021, I'm able to talk about it, but it wasn't that easy for me to talk about it. It took me a while to be able to feel strong enough. Um, it took me a while to completely have that inner, inner healing and go through the process to be able to talk about it. And that's the reason why I'm doing it today. So, you know, in my family, it was just both of us. It was just my baby sister and I. So, you know, I call her my baby sister because she's always gonna be my baby sister. But when, when she passed away, she passed away at the age of 40, I believe 44. You know, um, she's still my baby sister. Um, she will always be my baby sister. So the thing is that I never thought in my wildest dreams, and this happens with everyone who loses a loved one, but I never thought in my wildest dream that my sister um, would pass away so early in life. You know, we would always talk about when we would be old ladies and what we would do and we would have dreams and we would have goals and just sometimes, you know, she would call me at one o'clock in the morning and we would be talking for hours and everyone would be sleeping and we would just be talking about our childhood, 
um, about things that we used to do and we would just start cracking up and laughing hilarious. Um, so I hold on to those memories. Though, so, you know, we had really great times and I hold on to those beautiful memories. And me, as my, my faith, I know that it would be a day that we will meet again. But now that I'm here and I'm talking about this, I am able to talk about it. But it wasn't like this always. It was not. At the very beginning, during the process, I'm the type of person that when I'm going through something difficult, um, I don't know if I if it's called survival mode, but I get into a mode that I get numb completely. And, you know, I get numb and, um, and I feel like I become strong maybe because I feel like I have to be strong for everyone else. And, um, or that's just the way I cope with things, but I get numb at the moment, but it doesn't mean that that's how I am always. No, it does hit me. I go through my moments when I lost my sister. It was very hard. I went through all of the stages of grieving, but at that point when I was going through it, I didn't realize what it was. Now, when I learned about it and I read about it, then I realize and I say, oh my goodness, that's exactly what I went through. I, I felt that. Um, that's exactly what I, you know, so it's, I think it's very important. And, and, you know, some people are able to cope with grief and they're able to go through the process on their own, of course, uh, close to their loved ones and family and relatives and friends that they have a great support system and they're able to cope with that with um with that and that's enough for them and but there are other people that it is just very hard to be able to get over it to get you know and what i mean is it doesn't mean that you're going to forget and it doesn't mean that you're just going to move on and forget about the whole thing. No, it's, it is about how are you going to cope with it? Um, and it is about being able to move on with your life. But there are some times that while we're going through the grieving process, if you find yourself in a situation that you are getting depressed, okay, or perhaps you are getting to the point that you just, do not have the, the desire to uh, live anymore, okay? Or you just do not feel like, you just feel like there's no hope whatsoever. That's when you cannot ignore. You, it, you have to seek help. You know, and before I continue, I want to say, you know, a lot of people had at, would ask me, because my sister... She was in the hospital for three months before she passed away. It was very, very hard. I remember telling my friends and relatives, and I would tell them, I don't know what I would do if my sister dies. I'm going to die. I don't know what I'm going to do. And I remember crying and screaming in the parking lot one day. And, um, well, you know, it was very hard to know what she was going through. Um, but a lot of people ask me, how were you able to go through it? Because I have people that have four siblings, five siblings or more. And then they will come and tell me afterwards, how did you even do it? Because I have four siblings and if one of them passed away, um, I don't know what I would do. And you had one sister and she passed away and I don't know how you did it. The reality is, First of all, I did have a, an amazing support system at home with my, I had um, my, my family, amazing family, amazing friends. They were there, always checking up on me, never leaving me alone. But during that time, the, it was, it, 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 I think it was about a few months, I wanted to be alone. I just... 
I didn't much, I didn't want to talk much to people. I just wanted to be by myself. But they would be so, the reason why is I would talk to, to, I would talk to God, I would talk to Jesus, and I would, I would just go ahead and just let out my emotions. There were so many questions and, and doubts and, you know, so many things that I would have. But one thing that I would always ask him and I would say, please, Lord, give me the strength that I need. And, you know, I remember telling him one day, you know, I preach and I talk about your strength. Um, and I come before you because I do not have not even one ounce of strength in my body. And I need you to 100% Give me of your strength. And I would just do that. I would wake up in the morning. I would thank God. And even though it all felt like a horrible nightmare. And I wish I could open my eyes. And wake up and say. That was all a bad nightmare. And my sister would still be here. Um, of course that was not the case. But I would literally cry. And ask my Lord Jesus to give me the strength that I needed. To give me the strength that I needed because, you know, I have my parents, um, I have my children, my husband. Um, so I had my family, I had people that love me and I needed and, and um, you know, my family and um, my sister's children and, well, you know, it was a whole thing that I, I kept on trying. Brenda, you cannot forget this. Start remembering every all the good that is in your life and why you have to be strong. So I would come to the Lord and say, please give me the strength to overcome. Please give me the strength. And I had to ask for inner healing as well because so many things happen. And as we go along through the seven stages of grief, I will go ahead and share a little bit of what I was experiencing during that time, um, you know, of, you know, of understanding my emotions, understanding what I was going through, okay? So one of the things is you have to remember, if you're going through the grieving process, it's all part of the process you need to learn to do, to go through it. And it's a healthy way of being able to learning to cope and to move forward, to move on with your life, okay? So this is the reason why I wanted to share this with you because I think that it will be a blessing to all of you. So, we're going to talk about, you know, we all know that it is not uncommon to wonder why you feel overwhelmed, you know, or what, you know, to question how long you will experience these feelings. So, you know, if you're experiencing grief, right, it is okay to, to be able to have different types of emotions, okay? Um sometimes at that time we may not be we would be unstable you know but it is important to allow yourself to grieve and to know when to seek help that's so important when you start feeling that things are getting complicated or you're getting more um extremely overwhelmed um and you don't want it to start affecting you okay through your mental health. You don't want that. So that's why it's very important in at that moment when you're going through that and I what I urge the loved ones, the family members when the person is grieving in this in this type or during this process, they might not realize that they need help. So I encourage you to always be on the lookout, always see the signs if you see that there's extremely overwhelmed depressed i encourage you to help them to seek help because many times you're going through that and you know they're going through that and they do not even 
realize that they need it. So um, the best way to move forward after a loss is to allow yourself to go through the stages. So um, then we're going to go ahead. So remember, one thing you can never do, never compare yourself. If you are going through a lot, the, um, the grieving or the, if you're grieving over a loss, never compare yourself to someone else. Never. Because everyone is different. No one grieves the same. You are different. I am different. So during that process, you cannot compare yourself to everyone. You have to remember you are unique. So, you know, some people go through stages with little difficulty, right? And they find inner peace and the strength to move on without any complications, right? And others may experience one or more stages more than once. So you're gonna see all the stages and you may experience them more than once. So it's di you know, everything is different. However, also it's very important. So recognizing where you are in the process and knowing to see help is helpful. But for example, perhaps this person is going through the grieving process, but is able to bounce right back up within a matter of weeks. But that means it doesn't, you cannot compare that to someone else. Someone else may be going through a grieving process. It may take them months, you know, or even, or even longer. So that's one thing to really um, keep in mind. So here we're gonna start with the seven stages of grief. The first one we're gonna talk about is shock and denial. And I think that's one that we all go, I mean, shock and denial. When you go through that at the beginning, it's like a dream. You become numb, you don't even, re you're like wondering, did this really happen? So, you know, it's like, the effect that you, that that um you have experienced a loss may be evident but you may still have underlying feelings of shock or disbelief and that's something very common so feeling emotionally numb is also common some people may describe the stage of feeling as if they are watching someone else's life on a movie screen and and that's exactly what we talk and if, uh, or if they are detached from the reality of what has happened so, you know, you're like, no, this is all a nightmare. This can't be happening, you know, and, and, and you become numb to it. And that's what happened to me. You know, I, I mean, I cried, of course, and it was hard, but then after, then you just become like numb to it for a bit. And for me, that's a little scary because when you become numb, then you know, it's going to hit you sooner or later. So the first stage that we that we talked about is shock and denial. Then we have number two, which is pain and guilt. So you know, once your shock your shock starts to fade, then you'll notice the pain. That's when you start feeling the pain. You start feeling the absence of that loved one. So this is actually when it starts to hit you, when you start realizing that the loss is real, okay? So the pain, this is when the pain will become extremely difficult to handle, when you will have your burst moments that you break down, and they may even feel physical as well as emotional because, you know, you're gonna experience, um, anxiety and so many other feelings that that it does affect you physically as well uh another thing is you may even start feeling um guilty and this is something that i went through because you start thinking you start running everything like a movie you start going back playing it over again on your mind and you start saying if I should have done, I could have done something. I should have done something. I didn't do enough. And 
you couldn't even discuss feeling um have feelings that you start blaming yourself you know what if i should have be i should have paid more closer attention i should have done this i should have done that i should have done this differently what could have i done? i could have done to avoid it so this is a different everyone most everyone goes through this so during this stage it is normal to wonder if you could have done something that would have been prevent that that could have prevented the loss um or you start feeling remorse for not being able to make peace with the lo the loss of loved one that's another thing too if for some reason you had some there were some things um unfinished with the person during that time it might be a little bit difficult you might start feeling um the guilt and the pain and why didn't i do this and why didn't i say this to them or why didn't i do that so you know it's but it's a process so all these feelings can feel overwhelming and they are, are natural emotions everyone experiences these emotions now, how you may experience, how deep you may experience, it's all different. How you handle it, it's all different. So related to guilt, and it's important to acknowledge these feelings as part of the healing process. So it's so important you remember that. Alrighty, so we did number one, shock and denial. Then we did pain and guilt all right so pain and guilt then we're gonna go we're gonna go to the next one the next one is number three anger and bargaining so this one is, it is not uncommon for someone who's grieving to experience feelings of anger or frustration, you know. So, you know, some people may feel angry at a person who caused the loss, okay. Like, for example, um, if someone caused the accident, you're going to be, you feel angry. You'll feel anger against this person that did that or a drunk driver, okay and others may have feelings of anger directly towards god you know how many of you have ever heard them uh say, someone say to god how can you have taken him or her from my life why did you do this why did you allow this to happen why didn't you do something you know or or furthermore some people may even say i pray to you and you did not answer my prayers okay so this is very common i mean in that aspect for me personally because of my faith and and i understand death is part of life no matter how even if it hurts it is part of life but there's one that me personally i would never blame god for that but that's me but that doesn't mean at the moment that you are feeling so uh overwhelmed that you are feeling that pain from losing your loved one many people go and blame god for allowing this to happen all right so um and others also they blame the person that actually died for leaving them you know why did you leave me you knew I you knew I needed you. You know you knew I needed you. Why did you leave me? And so they become that they have that anger. All right. So during this time, some people who are grieving may try to bargain for a chance to have things end with a different outcome. Okay. So that's number three: anger and bargaining. So another one is depression number four depression reflection and loneliness so this is another process that we go through depression reflection and loneliness 
So during the stage of grief, a grieving person generally begins to reflect upon the last they experienced and how it has affected their life, okay? And um, the reality of the loss may be felt more during this stage because that's when you really start feeling the loss of that loved one. And you start to, um, you know, that you, you didn't, at that time when you were numb, you didn't quite realize it or didn't quite hit. So withdrawal from others to deal with these feelings of grief alone is a common occurrence during this stage. So me personally, I remember there were times when I didn't, it wasn't that I didn't want to be, how can I say that I did want it to be rude or I didn't want to be around people, but there were, this was the time for me when I found more comfort by being alone. I wanted to be left alone. Um, I would pray. I would remember the last the last times I was with my sister. I would tr remember the good times that we had. Um, but most of all, this is the time that I would I would take to reflect and meditate and pray um and this is how i was able to kind of regain my strength again and god would give me that strength that i needed so i can keep going and in a way he would ease and put peace in my heart and allow me to deal with the pain and the guilt and if i felt anger anything that i was feeling he would help me during this stage, because it would be a sta a time of reflection, um, and and of course, it is so important that during this time, that you have a good support system at home, or you know, from people that love you, from family and friends. It is so important. So as, even though this stage is very important as well, it is one of the most delicate um, st stages because if during this stage, the person does not have a good support system, this is when the depression could become critical. And this is when I encourage the loved ones family and friends if you know of someone that is going through the grieving process of losing a loved one and you feel that they just want to be alone all the time yes they need your, their space and and you can give it to them so they can be able to reflect on it but you can you're able to see um how bad it is and that they may have to search for um for uh to speak to someone for a therapist a counselor because believe it or not okay like i said everyone is different i was able to let it out and pray but i also had Friend, you know, uh, I had wonderful support system and I have my sister-in-law, which God bless her. She is a chaplain and she works for a hospice. So she also has, she sees death almost every day and she is able to help others and family and their families during this process. So she was there for me as well throwing my my heart moments and I was able to talk to her about it and she just li and she listened so just by having someone literally just listening to you during this time believe it or not it it's very helpful very helpful okay so now we're going to go to stage number 5 so the stage number five is called the upward turn. So finally, what does this mean? So when um, 
when you think there can't possibly be anything good coming ever again, drawing this process, the upward turn is when you start to feel a little bit better each day. So before you felt like never, you were never going to feel better again. You're never going to feel good. And it's just like, there's no hope and everything's just getting worse. But when you reach this stage and you have gone through stage one, two, three, and four, you start feeling a little bit better. And you might, at first, you might not realize it yet. You might not realize it. But as the time goes by, okay, um, you might not feel happy once because it doesn't, it, may, it doesn't happen overnight that one day you're going to be crying. The next day you're like, oh, wow, and you're happy and you're, you're off you go and you're moving forward. No, it's a process. But um, the pain that you felt might be less. It, it will be there, the sadness will be there, but it will be less. It won't be as intense as it was previously. So when you get to stage five, the upward turn, is when you start to feel a little bit better and you start to move forward slowly but surely, okay? Number six, stage number six, reconstruction and working through. So we continue, as we continue with the grief, grieving process, okay? Um, we have to understand the process is not always about feeling stressed or overwhelmed, right? So during the reconstruction and working through phases of the grief, a grieving person begins to start to work through the aftermath of the loss, right? So this stage is as much part of the grieving process as all the others. So it's very important. However, it seems it takes a different turn as during this stage, you can begin to feel a sense of control over your life. So what does this mean? Stage number six, reconstruction and working through is when you're actually able to be able to feel hope, a sense of hope, feel that you um, can literally pick up yourself again, okay, and move on with your life then you start to focus a little bit about your life because during this time before we get to stage six is that we don't six we don't it's that we do not even think about ourselves during that time we are just focusing on the loss of our loved ones and the pain that we are feeling because the pain is so intense and overwhelming and it just takes over our hearts but when we get to this stage we are actually starting to feel like we're getting our, putting ourselves together again, both emotionally and mentally. And then we start to regain slowly but surely our strength. Number seven, this one is the final stage, acceptance, acceptance. So the final stage is acceptance, okay? What is this? Is accepting, accepting the loss, okay? Now, by you accepting the loss of someone, it doesn't mean that you're going to get over it and that you're going to forget about it. But it is part of the process during when you acknowledge, okay, the loss of the, the loved one and that you actually feel okay with moving forward with your life, okay? And then you start by you accepting, then you start to get to know what is the new normal for your life going forward 
because before before you lost your loved one you would always imagine i would how can i live without certain person how can i live without he how can i live without how can i live without him how can i live without her i would not be able to but during this process when you get to the ex acceptance stage that's when you start to learn to accept move on with your life and you start learning learning to adjust to the new normal in your life okay i, I don't know if i make myself if you understand what i mean by that so this this is very 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 um important and once you reach the stage it makes it easier for you to be able to talk about the loss of that loved one because for example with me um it took a bit it didn't happen overnight if you would have asked me back then can you talk about it can you tell us about what you what you experienced with your sister i would not have been able to do it um, if someone would even mention it to me, I would get a knot in my throat. Um, I would just break down. I couldn't even talk about it. Um, I would, you know, I would even see things that would remember me of her and I would just break down crying. So that was during that time. But now, as I am personally can explain to you by being able to live these different stages that I'm able to talk about it now because I went through that and then I'm able to accept what what happened and when you're going through this you learn to accept what happened and you're also able to reflect and go back on those beautiful wonderful memories that you had and you're able to hold on to those memories you know, and, and I know that whenever, you know, we always say, hold on, when someone loses someone, we always say, hold on to those good memories. At that point in time, no matter what people tell you, you just, it just goes up here, I think. Because you're just so numb and the pain is so much that you're not even thinking that far. But when you get to this stage, the acceptance stage, then you start realizing that yes, that you are blessed to have those memories there, that you're blessed to be able to have, remember the good times, and that's what we have, those beautiful memories. You know, those memories that nobody will be able to erase from us because they're there for us. Um, so, you know, with this said, I just wanna, I hope that you enjoy this episode. Um, I hope you enjoyed. So I'm going to just go ahead and briefly name the seven stages of grieving. So I can summarize what I spoke about. Um, stage number one was shock and denial. Stage number two, pain and guilt. Number three, anger and bargaining. Number four, depression, reflection, and loneliness. Number five, the upward turn. Number six, reconstruction and work through. And number seven, acceptance. So I hope that this was a blessing to you. Um, I hope that a lot of you are not experienced a loss in your life. But if there is someone out there who is actually going through it, going through hard times with someone sick, someone going through it, or just your, um, or you actually suffered a loss recently and you're going through the grieving process, I encourage you to seek the Lord. I encourage you to pray because I really believe in the power of prayer. God is amazing. He continues to strengthen and does miracles. He strengthened us like no one else can. He was my strength during my most difficult moments. 
So I encourage you also, but also I want to encourage you that if you are feeling to the point that there's no hope and you just, the, the feelings of loss and sadness and loneliness are overwhelming in your life, I encourage you and I urge for you to seek someone to help you during this very difficult times. You do not have to go through it alone. You are not alone. So be blessed. And uh, before I conclude today, I just want to um, also remind you this episode um, is also going to be on my podcast on um, The Art of Living with Brenda Marley. I am in different podcast platforms, so you can go ahead and search for me. Again, The Art of Living with Brenda Marley. Um, I also want to thank who, um, everyone out there who has been listening to my podcast. Thank you so much. Uh, please text me for those who have my number or somehow through Messenger or any other means. Um, I encourage you to let me know what you think about my podcast as well because that allow that lets me know that I'm doing something right. And if there is any topic out there that you want to talk about or you want to hear about or you want to join with me one day, please I invite you. Um I always say, you know, together we can make a difference. So God bless you my dear listener. Thank you so much for joining me. God bless and I invite you to also see my, my blog as well. Have a good evening, everyone. God bless and be blessed. Bye.